In this video, we're going to take a look at the scandalous history of diet culture in old Hollywood. It's no secret that Hollywood has always been obsessed with weight and looks. But what you may not know is the shocking lengths that some stars went to in order to maintain their image. We're going to explore the dark side of diet culture and how it shaped the way we think about our bodies today. And first on the list is Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe, who was hailed as one of history's most stunning women and weighed a healthy eight and a half stones in her prime, felt the strain to maintain her physical appearance. To keep her figure, the five foot five and a half inch blonde beauty resorted to eating raw egg and milk smoothie. In a now defunct issue from Pageant Magazine from September 1952, Marilyn Monroe described her bizarre breakfast option, which included mixing milk and uncooked eggs together. And Marilyn Monroe said, I've been told my eating habits are very strange, but I don't think so. I doubt any doctor could give a working girl in a rush a more healthy breakfast recommendation. According to this nutritionist, who the wealthy and famous have paid up to $1,000 per consultation to assist with their diets, changes to Marilyn Monroe's diet would be necessary to prevent unneeded weight gain and lower the risk of food poisoning from the raw eggs. If you're going to drink milk, utilize skim milk at the very very least because whole milk is a source of saturated fat. And Marilyn Monroe's dinnertime meals consisted of a somewhat mild affair. She exchanged her uncooked eggs, raw milk, and raw vegetables for broiled liver, and carrots were her favorite. Marilyn Monroe was not ashamed to reveal her ice cream habit either. Unlike modern celebrities who have spoken of avoiding bad foods, during her evening theater classes, the blonde beauty would frequently stop by Will Wright's ice cream parlor for a hot fudge sundae. This well-known Southern California ice cream chain frequented by many other celebrities, including Frank Sinatra, closed by the middle of the 1970s. It was known for its incredibly rich ice cream, which contained 22% butter fat, nearly twice as much as you would expect to find in your ice cream today. That actually sounds pretty amazing. I am into ice cream, put it that way. I have to resist though. Nonetheless, Marilyn Monroe's 24 and a half inch waist might accommodate a size eight, but the celebrity's 10 minute workout burned off those ice cream calories. Each morning she would lift five pound weights for about 15 minutes until she was fatigued, but never indulge in sports because she preferred to leave the those things to the men. And Monroe remarked, I couldn't stand exercising if I had to feel regimented about it. I've never been very interested in outdoor activities and I have no desire to become the best at tennis, swimming, or golf. I'll let the men handle those matters. And next we have Elvis Presley. Before going to bed for up to two to three days at a time, Elvis Presley had a fascination with the 8,000 calorie fried peanut butter and bacon sandwiches, which he would even eat at two in the morning. In the 1960s, males tended to compete for the slimmer physiques worn by celebrities like the 150 pound Paul McCartney. Elvis Presley stood at an astonishing six feet tall and weighed 170 pounds back then, but his eating habits and drug use eventually caused him to gain weight reaching 260 pounds. Elvis had a bizarre dietary habit but to put it mildly, the native of Mississippi would have homemade biscuits fried in butter, sausage patties, four scrambled eggs, and occasionally fried bacon for breakfast. In a 1995 documentary, Presley's cook Mary Jenkins said that his favorite sandwich consisted of a toasted bread, peanut butter, slices of banana, and many strips of bacon that had been fried in a lot of butter. I've actually made the sandwich before. It's pretty good, but I feel like the bacon in between is a little strange in my opinion. Other times, she would modify this recipe and he would eat sandwiches made from hollowed out loaves of bread stuffed with a full jar of peanut butter and a full jar of grape jelly and a full pound of bacon. Each of these sandwiches contained eight thousand calories, which was more than a healthy man should consume in three days. That is insane. I feel like I'd 
just feel sick after eating that. And Elvis used to contact his chef at strange hours to get these sandwiches made for him, especially in the middle of the night sometimes. And she always said, if he wanted them in the morning when he got up, I would have to fix them. And if he wanted the sandwich at two in the morning, I would still have to fix it for him. When it comes to food, Elvis didn't care about the moment or the location. When he was taken to the hospital and was supposed to be eating only nutritious foods, Jenkins recalled a time when he asked her for permission to sneak in junk food. Meals were given his names because of Elvis Presley's absurd diet. One of them was referred to as Elvis's party meatballs and consisted of a sizable chunk of ground beef that had been wrapped in bacon. Elvis admitted to his cook that food was the only thing that had made him happy. So in order to lose nearly a hundred pounds that he had gained, it was rumored that he would follow an extreme variation of the increasingly well-liked Sleeping Beauty diet, which holds that the quantity of sleep you get affects whether or not you lose weight. He reportedly slept for three days straight to avoid eating and to stay in his signature white jumpsuit. Nevertheless, on two occasions in 1973, the star's lethal drug addiction, not his desire to slim down, were what would put him in a coma for days. Elvis Presley eventually had significant conditions like constipation, glaucoma, high blood pressure, liver damage, and an enlarged colon as a result of his peculiar dietary habits and drug use. And Jenkins stunned Presley on their final night together when he told her he didn't want to eat anything. August 1977 saw the discovery of Elvis Presley's death the next morning. And it really is sad how he died. I watched the Elvis biopic over the summer and it just... Ugh could go on. And next we have Elizabeth Taylor. And Elizabeth Taylor consumed a lot of cottage cheese and sour cream along with peanut butter covered meat. But many famous people have experienced the negative effects of severe dieting. So many people have chosen to cut out entire food groups in favor of eating unusually large amounts of food. And Elizabeth Taylor was the Hollywood celebrity that every woman aspired to be. But in the last 20 years of her life, when an injury left her bedridden and made her prone to stuffing herself with fried chicken and expensive sweets, she gained over 180 pounds. When Elizabeth Taylor weighed 120 pounds in the 1960s, her gluttony would have been typical. Her eating patterns at this time were more ludicrous than bad. She consumed scrambled eggs, bacon, and a mimosa for breakfast every morning. Her favorite lunch was a loaf of French bread hollowed out and stuffed with peanut butter and bacon. That sounds similar to Elvis. Her dinner was a fried chicken peas, biscuits, gravy, mashed potatoes, cornbread, handmade potato chips, trifle, and a tumbler of Jack Daniels brought the ridiculous to a new level. During her seventh marriage, Taylor, who had been married eight times, decided to take control of her eating habits and resorted to extreme diets that included consuming steak and peanut butter for dinner, as well as cottage cheese and sour cream. In her book, Elizabeth Takes Off, she provided full recipes of her ludicrously and insane diet. She remarked for her 1988 publication, it is more than a specific program for weight loss. It's a chance for you to throw away old self-destructive habits and adopt a more positive way of life. She would stick to her diet till she passed away in 2011 at the age of 79. And next we have Clara Bow. Clara Bow was a jazz age icon. An actress's contract may have had a weight clause in the 1920s and she had to maintain a weight under 118 pounds. Bo normally had an orange juice for breakfast, toast, and a salad without dressing for lunch, and a meatless dish for dinner, totaling about 500 calories each day. She apparently played tennis every evening and rode a horse every morning in addition to participating in outdoor activities like swimming and trekking for exercise. In order to lose weight, Bo also adopted the weird 20s habit of rolling rolling around on the ground while wearing tight clothing. And next we have Greta Garbo. The star Greta Garbo was a fitness enthusiast who tried yoga, tennis, swimming, skiing, and even had a juicer before green juice became popular. She was a customer of Dr. Henny Beeler, the author of the book Food is Your Best Medicine, which she promoted, and of Hollywood diet expert Gaylord Hauser. The book which promoted a diet that was primarily raw, whole, and organic was ahead of its time. Moreover, Beeler prohibited the consumption of carbohydrates, sugar, salt, 
caffeine and additives. And next we have Jean Harlow. Jean Harlow was upfront about how she maintained her 33, 25, 35 physique. Every time she needed to lose weight before a movie, she would adhere to a four day diet focused on tomatoes that was comparable to the Atkins diet. With the exception of breakfast, which consisted of nothing but black coffee and orange juice, every meal included two entire tomatoes and black coffee. She exercised with MGM's in-house trainer, Donald Loomis, and engaged in calisthenics and rope jumping. And next we have Ginger Rogers. Like Harlow, Ginger Rogers trained with Donald Loomis at MGM, but she used dance as her primary form of exercise. The actress, who is known for her lavish movie dance numbers, put her favorite southern girl diet of chicken and gravy to the test by participating in strenuous choreographed routines. She also enjoyed playing badminton, ping pong, and tennis. One of the most well-liked pin-up idols of the 1940s was Betty Grable. She danced to develop her million-dollar legs, which became legendary for her. She also worked out with Dick Klein, who advocated fun exercises like bird pecking, which involves literally pouting and pecking forward to prevent a double chin. Klein instructed the female students in the class to do the yelled get out of my way as they entered the bargain basement. I want that deal she exclaimed, turning at the waist and showing other buyers aside. She munched on onions and garlics as snacks. Oh my god, I feel like that would, I would have the worst breath if I munched on onions and garlic. And next we have Rita Hayworth. And Rita Hayworth, who once admitted to dancing eight hours a day, was another supporter of dancing's health advantages. She shunned bread and pastries and never ate oily or starchy foods. She engaged in the baguette stack stretch and swing system in addition to dancing, and the workout regime featured dance-inspired aerobics and moves that required no special equipment. And next we have Ava Gardner. Due to her insanely busy schedule and nervous stomach, which prevented her from eating, it is claimed that Ava Gardner indulged in a high calorie diet that prevented her from gaining weight. She overindulged in candies, fatty foods, dairy, and carbohydrates because she needed to eat to gain weight. And that seems like a good problem to have. Next is Grace Kelly, and Grace Kelly was raised in a sports obsessed household, but she rarely found the opportunity to work out. And Instead, she concentrated on dieting. She used yoga as her form of exercise. She ate only tiny servings of yogurt and berries for meals and followed the just say no rule when it came to dessert. I feel like I need to implement that in my head. Sometimes it's good just to be like, okay, I'm going to say no this time. And Kelly also used to practice the 11s. And this is arriving at work prepared with carrot sticks, celery, and dried apricots to nibble on if she became hungry before 11 a.m. This pattern involved eating oatmeal for breakfast, and I do agree oatmeal is filling. Next we have Jane Russell, and Jane Russell's hourglass body was very well known. She apparently detested diets and never kept track of her calorie intake, choosing to give up booze instead if she ever needed to make a sacrifice. She engaged in pleasurable exercises including hula hooping, archery, swimming, tennis, golf, skiing, and would dance to lose weight. And next we have Audrey Hepburn. And this is Audrey's typical diet. Her breakfast consisted of brown bread and jam. Her lunch was typically chicken, veal, or pasta with vegetables from the garden. And dinner frequently consisted of soup with chicken and vegetables. After supper, she indulged in baking chocolate. At night, she drank a finger or two of scotch. Her youngest son, Luca Dotti, revealed that Audrey also regularly indulged in detox days. And that included fruits, vegetables, yogurt, and a lot of water. In contrast to Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn had a straighter looking body. She credits her physique to years of ballet training and advocated for women to eat three substantial meals daily, at least one which should include red meat. She also never snacked. Adele Davis, a well-known dietitian, advised her to take supplements for vitamin A and vitamin C 
and a powdered liver. And that sounds so weird, powdered liver. Breakfast consisted of two boiled eggs, whole wheat toast, and three to four cups of coffee. Her lunch was cottage cheese with yogurt followed by raw vegetables. And dinner was red meat with cooked vegetables, occasionally a glass of wine. And next we have Sophia Loren. And Sophia Loren adores treating herself. The actress has never been embarrassed to indulge in carbs, unlike many celebrities today. And she said, everything you see, I owe to pasta. Even cookbooks featuring her preferred Italian dishes have been written by her. Or as a child, she quickly gained a profound love for fine cuisine after becoming successful in Hollywood. Sophia Loren even published a few cookbooks with Italian-inspired dishes like lemon spaghetti, seafood cooked in the Sicilian style, and Tuscan bean soup. And next we have Gloria Swanson. And Gloria Swanson was an actress who was definitely ahead of her time. She adopted clean eating in the 1920s and eliminated meat and white sugar from her diet. She also became a dedicated yoga practitioner in the early 1950s after finishing Sunset Boulevard and giving lectures to others about the advantages of exercise and a balanced diet. And next is Joan Crawford. And Joan Crawford was one of the most iconic actresses from the golden age of Hollywood. And she was well known for her striking beauty, remarkable talent, dramatic acting, and impeccable fashion sense. However, what many people may not realize is that she was also devoted to maintaining a healthy and disciplined lifestyle. Crawford adhered to a strict diet, which she attributed to her radiant appearance and unmatched energy levels. Her commitment health and fitness is something we can all learn from and draw inspiration from and i definitely think based on i guess mummy dearest and that other show feud i can see how joan crawford would be very controlling with her diet and strict and uh, readers were rewarded about Joan Crawford's peculiar diet in a 1929 piece in Photoplay magazine. Catherine Albert, the article's author, stated, I witnessed Joan Crawford prepare an entire brunch with only a few tablespoons of cold consomme, a serving of rhubarb, and six crackers that have been literally slathered with mustard. And next we have Mae West. Mae West loved having a curvy shape and she worked hard to keep it for her movies. She stated to the San Jose News in 1933 that she enjoyed eating cream chicken on buttered toast, lobster Newburgh, and chocolate cream cake to fatten up for her role. And next we have Judy Garland. Judy Garland's iconic status in Hollywood was reinforced by her performances as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Dorothy was sweet and kind and audiences fell in love with her from the very first scene. She was the good-hearted Kansas farm girl who wanted to go home after discovering herself in the Kingdom of Oz. But the youngster had to travel through a much more dangerous landscape than the dangers of Oz in the planning and production of the 1939 masterpiece. Garland had to put up with the brutally long work hours and a studio structure that often approved of the use of drugs like stimulants to keep actors going and sleeping pills to make sure they got enough sleep. Garland, the 17-year-old, was already addicted to barbiturates and amphetamines by the time she finished filming Oz. Her drug use had started before the actors put on those ruby slippers, in part because studio executives insisted she stay lean and active so she could handle long days of filming. Judy Garland's mother was the first to give her then nine-year-old daughter drugs, both for energy and sleep. Signed by MGM, she performed in over two dozen pictures while still a teen, frequently alongside Mickey Rooney, who was also a teenager at the time. She was regularly inspected by studio executives as per her contract, especially in regard to her weight. At the age of 14, Garland made her screen debut in 1936's Pigskin Parade, a musical comedy about football coaches. According to reports, studio president Lou Louis B. Mayer and the MGM executives were already concerned about any additional weight on the small actress, even going so far as to call her a fat little pig with pigtails. Garland was put on the first of many diets, which drastically limited her food consumption and required regular observation. Mayer required she only consume chicken soup, black coffee, smokes, and appetite suppressing medicines in order to maintain her weight. Judy Garland's third husband. Sid Luff stated that the 
actress had been on either a benzedrine or a diet or both for most of her teenage and adult years. Unlike other actors, she found it difficult to conceal her considerable weight, especially given that she was performing while dancing and wearing skimpy outfits. She may appear underweight but still appear heavy and out of proportion on television because she was just 4 foot 11. Garland wasn't the only person required to take these pep pills. Rooney, who co-starred with her in movies including Babes in Arms, Loves Finds, Andy Hardy, and Strike Up the Band, was also forced to take them. Garland and Rooney both worked extremely hard for the studio, and neither of them opened up about their experiences until years later. They had us work non-stop for days and nights. Even after we were completely worn out, they would give us medicines to keep us going. Then they would take Mickey and I to the studio hospital, where they would give us sleeping drugs to make us fall asleep, Garland said to historian Paul Donnelly. Then after four hours, they would wake us up and administer the pep pills once more so that we could work another 72 hours. That is insane that they had to work 72 hours straight. Like, crap. That's like literally, I'm shocked. We were suspended from the ceiling for half the time, but it was just how we lived. I don't even know how you could stay awake that long. Studio executives were communicating with one another in memos a year before the release of The Wizard of Oz about Garland's dietary habits. Garland was already in an upper downer drug cycle when the movie's filming actually started. Hollywood stars have been on extreme diets for as long as the movies have existed, and today's celebrities continue to follow these dangerous habits. From extreme fasting and cigarette smoking to an obsession with being thin, Hollywood diets of the past were scandalous in their own right, but also provided a chilling glimpse into how much pressure people put themselves under just to fit society's beauty standards. The public often celebrates celebrity slimmer stories, but it is important to remember that the measures they go to are risky and can be deadly if not done responsibly. So let's take a look and thank our lucky stars. A healthy body is now accepted. And thank you for watching and make sure you check out some of my other diet videos. Alright, see you guys again soon. Bye.